Continuing where we left on episode 6, another reason why we add sound effects in pause is because props that look realistic may not produce realistic sound when interacted with. Here's an example of a shot from Perth by Jin on the use of a candy beer bottle hit. You don't fuck with me! Your face is a gun enough! Here, I added a glass breaking sound when the props break. Other times, we see things which do not exist in our universe on screen. Be it by visual effects artists or practical effects, they do not make noise by themselves. After all, sound on film is intentional and they all need to serve some purpose to support the narrative of the film. So, for sound effects beside ambience, there are two kinds. One is called Foley and one is called Hard Effects. Basically, Foley artist is an artist who's good at replicating the human making sound in front of the microphone. So they will act out the footsteps or clothes rustling or other kind of noise and handling object also. So it's very skillful job and it's a deep topic. I think it's worth one masterclass by itself. Hard effects are from like car engine noise, gunshot, fighter jet passing by, like vacuum cleaner, all those kind of sound. Those are the sound that I may need to record or I go into sound effects library. I'm not afraid of using libraries because I always modify them to fit the picture. Not only timing, and, but the pitch. Nowadays, a lot of libraries sound very good, but I feel that they are, um, how do I say, they give bigger weight so that it stands out from the rest of the effects. So sometimes I need to reduce the impact of the sound itself. These are literal and realistic sound effects. When you see on screen, that is what you get to hear like punching, car noise, all this. But sometimes real sound do not sound realistic. Okay, so this is another scene from Ramen Te. It's a video blog that Miki, played by Seiko Matsuda, has posted. So it's playing back from the laptop computer. So that's what I did first. Music and her voice recorded at studio, mixed together, and I played back on the laptop computer and captured it on the microphone. It didn't work. It sounded too cheap. It is realistic, no doubt, but it wasn't sounding convincing for the laptop playback. So instead, I use plugin effects and modify it to sound like as if it's coming out of the laptop speaker. By the way, the typing effects, usually by visual effects artists, and usually we add on sound. But this time, we see Masato, played by Takumi, his hands typing it. And if you know how we type Japanese, we often use alphabet and we convert it to hiragana, katakana, kanji, which are the three different characters we use in Japanese. So it would be very, very difficult for non-Japanese native to do these visual effects. But lucky enough for us, we had Japanese artists at Imajika, uh, Yuri Ed, she did a very good job. And it doesn't look as though it's added in, but it's so natural. So that kind of thing happens. So like, you know, 
it's not always the same way that we work, but it can be visual effects first or sound first. Thus, the workflow must be flexible. When the production recording on sound effects is good, that will be the most natural sound for the image. So we do not always have to replace in post-production, but select the best sound that fits the narrative. 